Hey, this is Jerry Taylor Suede, and welcome to Couple with the Queen. I'm so happy that you join me today as we listen in on a pre-recorded Zoom meeting that I did with another network marketing expert from a different company that I'm in, and it was so great to collaborate with him and share some of the things that we've learned over the years of being in the network marketing, multi-level marketing, and direct sale arena. I hope you listen in and pick out something that you can really take and call your own for your future in this fantastic business model we call network marketing. If you like what you hear, please subscribe to more of the Couple with the Queen podcasts. Thank you so much. Enjoy. Okay, so I am super excited for today because I've been looking forward to talking to you, Michael, on this Zoom and uh, picking your brain and, you know, just sort of collaborating about <laughs> about direct selling. For me, I'm more of a direct seller. You're more of a network marketer, multi-level marketer, and you help people with health and wellness. And I help people in another way, and I love to help people too. So it's a really great um, mix. And I was saying earlier today when I was online on my Facebook page that I was looking forward to talking to you because in my business, I'm in cosmetics. So most of the people that I work with are women. I know. So it's nice that I get to talk to you and get a man's perspective of this business model that we're in that we love. And I um, just want to say welcome. And I wanted to ask you, you know, we talked last week or two weeks ago, was it? And yeah. we, we had a great uh, conversation that day, right? Yeah, we did. Yeah. And what we found out is that we both have learned a lot over the years about ourselves and about this business and about being in business, period, and, and all the things that go along with that. So you had shared some really cool things, and I thought it was really neat, and I wanted to hear it again, and I wanted it to get recorded because I would love to have my team be able to listen to it as well. And I know you want your team to listen too. So um, do you want to share kind of what this journey that you've been on lately and what you've learned? I would love to. Obviously, we all have a journey, right? And we all have a story to tell. And I'm no different. <clears throat> I think what we were, you know, talking about was, you know, parts of our journey. I and my old life was a CPA. I was a partner in a large firm here in Las Vegas. And I know that's where you used to live, Jerry. And, yeah. and I'm really thankful that you've invited me to be here. And for any of you on Jerry's team, let me tell you, this woman, you have a great team leader. And, and I know that she has a big heart of gold. And I connect to people just like that. I'm so, I am grateful that I'm here. I mean, but going back to my my story, uh, as a CPA, I had just a few uh, people in comparison to the masses that were clients of mine. I dealt with entrepreneurs, and maybe entrepreneurs are like five percent of our population. So there's ninety five percent of the population that I couldn't really help, and it bothered me because these people had it all figured out. I was still figuring it out. <laughs> but I felt I was better to help all these people. And so after about 10 years, the last 10 years I practiced, I, my heart wasn't in and I got out and I got out because, um, of my dad, really my dad in 1999 had came down with lung cancer. He was a smoker and a drinker, although he quit smoking years uh, prior because of mom's emphysema and about a month before he died I witnessed some that completely altered my life we're having this conversation and dad said I just want to die right now I mean he had terminal cancer we knew he was going to die we didn't know when but that day 
I witnessed someone with hopeless eyes. I had never seen that ever before in my life, uh, especially out of my dad. And then, you know, about a month later on a hot June day here, he, he passed away in my arms. And I vowed that day that I would never compromise my own health. He got to that stage to where, I mean, he had compromised it. I mean, for years, we kept bugging him about his smoking. Oh, no, I, I smoke. It's good for me. And yet, during that period he was dying, he was bad-mouthing the cigarette companies. And and I realized that I, I was headed down the same path in a lot of ways. I was obese. I was big, just like Dad was. And it was a wake-up call to me, primarily because I think, something that I think all all human beings want freedom. I think it's innate in all of us. Some of us go about it, uh, moving towards that, some don't. And, and that day I said, and, and so I was now on a journey um, of self-development. I never did that in the CPA firm. My partners would never let me go to personal development and uh, continuing education and pay for it. And so there were so many things that I wanted out and I tried a bunch of diets. They didn't work. And I would go to these dry, it, any of you watching is your CPA dry and boring? Well, I didn't think I was, but no, oh, no, she's not. We talk girl stuff too. <laughs> but I was at I was going to this two day seminar and I got used to, especially the last several years in my uh, profession, I was a tax guy, one of the best here in Las Vegas. And you'd go to these dry, boring, and these guys would just be spewing stuff. And it was just awful for me to sit. And I'm kind of an energetic person. And we were coming back from Salt Lake, uh, vacation trip my wife and I take she's from up in that area and I stopped at a a bookstore in St. George Utah about 120 miles north of here and I always go to the used book pile I mean I'm as frugal as they can be and and there was this paperback book for five bucks and I looked through it I'd seen the title before and it was brand spanking new Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Oh, Hill. really? I took that book, Jerry, to this CPA seminar. You know, they get the pleasantries out of the way, and I just checked out and started reading, and I could not put it down. I read it three times in those two days. I still have it. And that kind of got me thinking about how wealth was created, but how other things were and, so I was on a massive uh, journey, and then I got turned on to a coaching program, uh, Dan Sullivan. Can I, can, I, can I just interrupt you for one second? Yeah, yeah. I just have to tell you, this is, this is pretty amazing because the CEO of our company, same thing happened to her. She was told that she needed to read that book, and it would change wow. her life. And when she read that book, everything for her changed. And that's when her journey to start a company and all those things happened. I got and chills. Read Think and Grow Rich. And she has all of us read it too. As our distributors in my company, it's, it's one of the books that we are supposed to read. And nice. so I think that is pretty, we did not know this about each other. I think that's pretty cool. Well, it is way cool. And Napoleon Hill was way before his time. Yes. Uh, I won't get in. Uh, so I was in another program, Dan Sullivan, The Strategic Coach. He's got a great podcast. And he challenged me in my thinking about kind of what we, we have these more ways and folk ways is what it's called in psychology and sociology to where you never think outside. It's just the way it is, the way it is. And so everyone subscribed it. No, I'm going to die when I'm like 80 years old. And I go, why? Why does people think they can't live longer? And so I made this declaration that I was going to see the 22nd century. Now, mind you, I was born in 1956. So that I have to be 144 years old to see the 22nd century. <laughs> 
and I have that. Correct, but that's pretty. I mean, you're not. Well, you could. You could. No, I will. You I will. will. Well, your spirit in any way, your spirit will live on. <laughs> now, I never really told anybody because I was, and we're going to get into that because it's really what you and I talked about. Because I was like, no, yeah. they'll laugh at me. I, no, I'm just I trying to fit laugh, in but life. That's like amazing that you that you thought that. Well, and it was something that I set in motion. And yeah. I didn't I didn't know anything about how the mind worked then, other than what Napoleon Hill. I hadn't read much others. Well, anyway, from the day I made that declaration, now I, things started coming in my life and might come, like say health and wellness. And one of my clients had just joined. And she came to my office. I knew her, she was a client, but we were bleacher bums. Our sons played baseball together and, you know, from junior high to high school together. And so I just knew her really well. She came in my office and, and I was now on this quest to live to 144. And I knew I had to lose a bunch of weight. And she had just joined this company and said, I think I have a solution for you. And I'm all ears and we're talking and I go to a, a presentation. Yeah. And I listened, you know, it was a PowerPoint and the gentleman who is like, I think he's like our ninth uh, income earner right now presented. And what was most important about that, I don't even remember what he presented. I remember the people in the audience and their stories, social proof. I mean, obviously that is huge. And I drove home that night and I said to myself, I'm going to go join. I'm going to do it tomorrow. I'm going to get their weight loss pack. And I said, and someday, I think I'll be a network marketer. Uh, and so I joined. That was in 2006, February. Lost 50 pounds. Uh, 14 months after first putting the product in my body, I did my first Ironman triathlon at age 50. Now, I've done 15 I total. Remember and that. I remember I that because you were I was following you on we've been following each other on Facebook for a long time because I lived in Vegas and so did you yeah. I'm pretty sure we probably met at some event but I don't recall we met on the phone just a couple of weeks ago actually yeah. we actually talked but I remember watching because my husband and I had been in Hawaii where you ran the marathon in Kona and, um, and so I was very interested because I, I saw the path. I saw, I was actually there one year when, wow. when they did it. And so I remember that whole thing. And so I was super interested in following you and, and watching your path. And you actually moved over there for a while to, um, practice and run and all that. And I thought that that was really cool, but keep your mind of where you're at right now in your story, because I want to go back just a second. Yeah, yeah. When you were talking, I was thinking about all those people that we have talked to about, you know, network marketing, multi-level marketing, uh, home-based business, basically. And it seems to me that uh, most of the people that I've talked to, and you just said it yourself in your story, that most of the time, People are looking for something. They might not know even what they're looking for. You didn't know that you were looking for a career in network marketing. I did not. But, but you knew that you were open. You're, you're, you had put yourself in a place where you were open to say yes to an opportunity. And you were open to saying yes to a product line that would do something that you needed it to do. And I think that over my years of being, 21 years of being in direct sales, I know that that is true for me, that most people um, are, are open to either the product or the opportunity or both. Um, and it's usually because of something that's going on in their life or something that they're not happy with or whatever. And so I think it's so cool that you can tell your story and that you were so impressed with other people when they were telling their stories 
I still you know, am. <laughs> me too. When you were telling me about your lipstick thing, I was like right there with you, going, "I get that." <laughs> I know. You said I'm not a guy. I'm not a girl, but I'm I I'm kind of intrigued by that whole thing. So totally. I mean, it, it is fun. It is fun, and it's and it's so it's so much more real when you can actually hear people's stories, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, and I'll get. Uh, I want to, I want to touch base on that. Uh, let me just finish my story. So okay. I, uh, because of that deck, well, my dad dying in the declaration, I'm going to live to 144. What that does is open up the reticular activation system. So the mind is now only looking for that. And, yeah. and I saw it. And so I jumped in and I was looking to get out of the CPA thing to, bless all these people's lives and network marketing. I go, man, I think that might be the thing to do. One of the biggest things I've learned about uh, helping people, and I didn't always understand this, and it brings it down to a fundamental level, level and I think it, it's applied to anybody in this world. Human beings crave trust. I mean, there's six human needs that we have, uh, love and connection is one of them. And obviously trust is a big factor in that. Yes. And when I started to study story and the power of story, I knew that I had this story, mm -hmm. but I was fascinated by other people's story. I still am. Somebody, uh, even like when I read the Holy Scriptures, I'm like right there walking yeah. with the Savior or I'm right there. Yes. Uh, and, and, and that's what I learned. I got turned and on to Jesus, this. And Jesus taught through stories. Oh, greatest storyteller of all time. Right. I got turned on to Bo Eason and his story power. And I spent a year in his program. And, and the key to teaching is story. Well, I'm sitting in Bo's class. And his storytelling coach who writes stories is there. Mary's her name. She used to be in Disney, Disneyland helping the execs tell their story. And then she just went out on her own. And, and so her and Bo are sharing stories. And, and I'm just immersed. I'm writing notes like crazy. And then she said something. Because Bo had talked about the power of story. You look at how people follow stories. Look at them for good and evil. You look at Hitler. He, he sold the bill of goods to those people in story, and they followed him. Unfortunately. When you learn how to tell story, people will follow. Yes. And so Bo is talking a lot about trust, that the world is craving trust. Mm -hmm. Because I'm 63 years old, and of course, Jerry, you're not even 30 yet. Ah, yeah, okay. <laughs> I just have four grandkids. <laughs> From my time as a little boy till now, I mean, trust has went psh, just the opposite. Yeah. And it's a human need of love and connection. We want connection. We want to trust people. Yes. And, and so marry now. I mean, I've got this whole trust thing. That's really what I want to deliver to people. That's the gateway so that they would drop their guard, if you will. There's a, there's a great uh, poem that you may have read uh, from Marianne Williamson, Our Deepest Fear. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we're powerful. Bond men. Just do a Google, Marianne Williamson, Our Deepest Fear. The last stanza in that poem, she says... As we are liberated of our fear, just our presence liberates others of their fear. And you see, when we can be trusted, then it drops people's fear level and they're liberated of their fear. So now there can be connection. Yeah, that's And I'm like, I, I'm like digging into this story. And then Mary says something that was a drop the mic moment. And we've all had those before you've all had a speaker or seen on television or read in a book that you read and you oh my gosh you stop you highlight it you write about it well that's how this moment was with mary when she said the following our credibility is our vulnerability 
I mean, obviously, for what we do, people aren't really buying lipstick. I'll use that as an example. They're buying looking better. They're look. They're buying confidence that the lipstick provides. They're buying a benefit. Yeah. And the other thing they're buying is us, our trust. If they can trust us. And when Mary said that, I go, oh my gosh, vulnerability. It, our credibility is our vulnerability. And obviously when we're vulnerable, I when we that. can share our deepest, hardest stories, our crap in our life. Yes. Like a, like a, when I was starting out in network marketing, I shared Dave MacArthur's story. Dave is, oh man, he got to hundred K in 12 months. I never shared my authentic story. Like I'm just starting out. I haven't earned Jack. I was afraid because they say, and I, He's not good enough because he's not earning any money. But people, and we've all seen it on social media, especially. I see it on Facebook, but mostly I see it on Instagram. You could tell somebody spamming. I mean, I've been guilty of that. Where it's constant about their product and they're, oh, I did this. I'm looking sharp and cool. And you know darn well, everybody on the face of this planet's got pain and suffering. We all do. We all have these vulnerable stories to tell. Yes. And that's what connects people to us. And so when I'm in my like audience, even here, I, I just shared like a couple of my little stories. Yeah. My dad dying in my arms. Uh, I mean, I have others uh, that I share. But when we can be authentic, that's the term. I don't even like using the word authentic, really. When we just be who we really are, where we're not pretending, where we know, like for me, I'm big on teaching people that they are the greatest creation on this earth. Right. There is not any living being on this earth more phenomenal than a human. No. Uh, the whole earth was made for us. Right. This body that, like I used to hold it in disdain when I was tall. I hated being tall. Why? I was a shy introvert, still am. Hey, Jolly Green Giant, how's the weather up there? I mean, I was, I just wish I was like smaller. And then I started playing sports was my, my savior, really. And I are, had to stay. Are, are you, are you more, I mean, like I've never seen you in person, I don't think. Six, so are you, how tall are six, you? Six, five. Oh, you're six, five. So you're the same height as my, my son-in-law is six, five. If he's six, five, then we're the same height. Yeah, he's probably better looking than I am, though, because he's your <laughs> son-in-law. I just can't imagine you being really overweight and heavy. I just can't I, imagine that. I was 254 pounds when I first put that product in my body. Wow. And I went to 197. And 14 months later, I raced a Hawaii Ironman. I on my Facebook page in those little feature photos. I have my picture when I finished the Hawaii Ironman and I had a tire I couldn't get rid of. And I didn't know at the time I had developed prediabetes. Oh. And I've conquered that. I'm 186 pounds today when I weighed myself. And that's kind of my weight right now. But, yeah. uh, but I had disdain for this body like a lot of people do. And they don't realize how phenomenal it is. Our eyes, our heart beats like a billion gazillion times. I mean, it, adrenaline will get us where we're, we can, it's phenomenal. And why? Because God loved us so much. He said, I'm going to give you the most fantastic body on the face of this world. And I'm right. going to give you a complete earth that is yours. And this is a message that's part of one of the public speaking I do is about the greatest creation. And, and so for us as direct sellers or network marketing, what, what we really are is a, uh, a gap master in a lot of ways. When we listen, yeah. And this is some I'm still learning to do when we listen and they can tell us their story, especially. Mm -hmm. And they let us know where they're wanting to go. Right. And they tell us where they're at. Right. And just by listening to them where they'll tell you that it's huge. That's a trust thing. Strangers don't. You don't go up to somebody in the store and say, hey, my name is Jerry and I sell lipstick. And, you know, I had the worst childhood ever. I mean, you just don't do that. Oh, no. You want to. 
Uh, I mean, I'll share my story to anybody that's got ear to listen. And so when we can like, just get the, get the walls down, share your own story first, people start sharing theirs and you're actively listening and empathizing. It's, and, and this is where they're at. Then we ask the simple question, Hey, you know what? I know of a person that was like where you're at, but got what you want. Are you open to learning more? And, and so that's really, that's what I've been preaching, if you will, is to get my distributors who, um, and, you know, most 80% and my team is females. Like I think most are selling and network marketing is, and most have what I call shame. I mean, if you read from Brene Brown, most don't fully feel good about themselves. Most want to serve and earn a little income. Okay, I meet them right there. Uh, it's so few that are going to be like us, Jerry. They're like, God, okay, I'm going full bore. I want to not that away. And and I just love serving those people. Yeah, I mean, they're like my they're like my my moms. It's and a few guys that I got on my team. I don't have very many. And they're just as afraid as these women. But the beauty part is when I started sharing story over the last year, some of them said, you never told me that. I never knew that. I did a, <clears throat> let me just finish with this little quick story. I'm going through a, a course by three seven-figure a year income earners. I don't even know what company they, well, I do know what one is now. I discovered it today. And uh, they have this re, relaunch formula over three videos. And I go, okay. So I relaunched on Saturday uh, on Facebook. And I got pretty vulnerable about, uh, you know, the challenge in our life with my wife's um, Parkinson's. That's my new why. I was amazed it, as before I got online, 566 views and like 60 comments. And all I did was to get my why and get real with people. Yes. And it just went viral. Yes. And that was like, that was, that was a affirmation me like, okay, I got it. Yes. So many nuggets of truth in what you're saying. So many things that I've learned, the same thing. I mean, truth is truth, right? Truth is truth. Yes. No matter what company you're in or what business you're in, but there's certain nuggets of truth that we can all use. And I find that I have learned so many of the same things that you have. And, the, and I noticed one thing you said is that now you have a new why. And, you know, in, on my team and in my company, we talk about what is your why a lot. Because when, when people connect with their why, they're willing to do more. They're willing to work harder. They're willing to do what it takes to be successful because they have a connection to their why. Which is interesting that a lot of people don't know what their why is. They have no clue because they're not connected to themselves at all. It's right. like two separate, there's two separate beings. The inner being is like all closed up and not even open to their own self. And so they don't know what their real why is. And a lot of people say, well, I just need to make more money. But money usually is not a good enough why to get you through the hard times because everybody, every business owner, everybody goes through hard times. And especially now, I mean, we're all, every business wow. right now is going through tremendous hard times. So if you don't have a why to push through those days when you don't feel like doing anything, if you don't have a why to get you to the other side of those bad days, then a lot of times people just quit. But sometimes your why changes. And what I noticed that you said is you had a new why because your wife has just been discovered that she has Parkinson's. That wasn't your why before. Your why before was you wanted to get rid of that fat. You wanted to have hope in no, your that life. No, wasn't. Hope is well, not, right? You wanted to get healthy. You wanted to live to 144. You wanted to serve your body better. Those are 
were all whys before. And they're not, it's not like they're gone, but now you have a new why that's sort of taken your passion and, and sort of projected you forward because now you have your wife that has now Parkinson's and that gives you something else, right? If you would have asked me two years ago, do you know what your why is? I would have said, I do not. Oh, really? Yeah, I didn't know. Like you said, most people don't know. I didn't either. Yeah. I, I knew that I loved health and fitness. Mm -hmm. I loved Ironman. Um, and yet the reality is I was a pretty insecure male, actually. And when I, I, I mean, I was, I had to go through addiction recovery and I, you know, I'm fully recovered now. And it was that, that I shed and, and it got in touch with myself, just like you said, that's exactly the case. Yeah. And I use Simon Sinek's find your why, uh, he's got a course, but I read his book. And what Simon says about your why, uh, I would have said exactly what you said, Jerry, about your, you know, your why can change. And, and it, Simon says it never changes. And you get it when you're about nine years old is when you finally discover it. I have maybe a new purpose with how I'm going to care for my family Mm -hmm. And so I, it's not necessarily a new why. I mean, I'll, I would have always done that, mm -hmm. but I'm just using it as story now. I mean, I know what my why is and it took a lot of discovery and it's, it fits with in my wife's situation. My why is to help uh, people overcome the fear of ill health, financial, um, financial pain, if you will, mm -hmm. and the feeling of inadequacy so that they can find well, uh, a freedom through well-being. And that fits in there. I mean, my wife's got ill health and I'm just gonna pour everything into her. So it's like a new subset of my, my why. And, and you're right, <clears throat> when I finally discovered that, um, there, I'll tell your, uh, anybody that watching this who don't really quite know what your why is, and it's okay not to know what your why is, but it is inside of you. I used, the biggest tool that I use that got me to understand it is, is simply write down on a piece of paper the five greatest movies you ever watched. Don't think about it, just write them down. And then after you write them down, dwell on the common theme of those movies. Mm -hmm. And in mine, my favorite movie is Saving Private Ryan. Then there is the Hoosiers about, you know, those basketball kids had nothing to do with the coach. Uh, my, uh, the theme of that movie is redemption of Jimmy and, and this coach, same as Private Ryan. And then the movie, The Shack, where like Oprah Winfrey is the black god. But all of the movies, me, was redemption. And, and so me, it's to redeem people of these things. So it's all about redemption. So you want to find your why. That's one connection part is in those greatest movies that you loved. And then look for the common theme in there. And then you're going to start sensing. And then Simon said the following too. Your why has to be where you're serving others. He said there's... No, and he's like, he's the authority on why. And that's true with me. Uh, but I, I mean, I, I built, you know, uh, I mean, I was up to 200 K a year in network marketing. And when I went through recovery, phew, I mean, I, I've been to the top and a lot, but when I was building the first time, I was all about me. Yeah. Seriously. Oh yeah. I went to the meetings and I could recruit and talk, but I did it for me. Yeah. And now it's all about doing it for others yeah. to help them redeem. So, yeah, I agree with that. I, I, I so agree with that because when you get outside of yourself, so you say things a little different than I do, but yeah. we're kind of saying the same thing, right? We are. Yeah. Is that when you get outside of yourself and you start, if you, 
If you help more people get what they want, then you ultimately get what you want. But it's it's giving to others. It's teaching others or, you know, maybe you don't like teaching, but just giving of yourself or giving of your time or, you know, there's a lot of ways you can give to other people. But when you do that, then you're so not focused on yourself and that that um, self-centeredness just goes. It just, you right. can't. You can't be giving and truly giving of yourself and your heart and be self-centered at the same time. And the more you give, the more you get, but you're not giving. Well, some people, you can tell. You can tell the difference when some people give to get or when people give to just give. There's a big difference. And and that goes back to the trust factor that you were talking about. It's all about totally. trust because people want to do business with people they know, like, and trust, period, end of story. They want to do business with people like that. So if they have a choice to do business with that person or that person or that person, whichever one they have a connection with, whichever one they trust, whichever the one they feel is more authentic and real, the real word, then that's who they're going to, that's who they're going to do business with. It's so true. So Oh my gosh. I love everything that you said. It was so, I, I really, it was wonderful. So uh, Michael, tell everybody what your, or your, um, your website is. What's your website? It's easy. Uh, www.michaellance, which is spelled L-A-N-T-Z dot net. Michaellance.net. And mine's my, my commercial website is liquidmakeup.com so that's pretty easy yeah. and then my jerry taylor suede.com so you know that's easy too so thank you so much michael it was a pleasure so anyway and my podcast is couple with the queen by the way mm-hmm. uh, so thank you so much you guys take care have a blessed day and okay. remember you are the greatest creation amen to that bye-bye Thank you for tuning in. If you would like to hear more from Jerry, subscribe to the Cuppa with the Queen podcast, where you will learn more about how you can grow your own home-based business. Find Jerry at jerrytylerswade.com and on Facebook at Cuppa with the Queen.